All right, guys, so right here I have two devices for you today. One is the Pixel 6a, as you can see, in all its glory. Metro by T-Mobile, just so you know. And the second one is the N30 5G, also Metro by T-Mobile. This is a OnePlus device. Now, like I always say to you guys, I want to start off with the price so you know before we even hop into this video. This is about $279 without an upgrade, just buying it straight out. This guy's about $349 or $379 around that range. If you're a new line customer and you're porting, free, free. Both free, you just pay the first month bill and activations. If you are a person that's adding a line, this is where the price jumps a little bit differently. $50 for the Pixel, $49.99 plus first month and activation. $89, which is weird why they would do that for this device, especially given that it's not better than the Pixel overall first month service and everything so you're still looking at a certain amount of money either way both very good devices in their own right but only one is technically better i want to be honest it is the pixel right off the back you don't need me to tell you that but let me just give you some of the reasons why and some of the reasons why it might be worse in your opinion or in my opinion anyway let's get into this video let's talk about it First things first, here is the Pixel 6a, I'm sorry, yeah, Pixel 6a 5G. Now, this actually runs very smooth. The touch is very responsive, as you can see. To be honest, it is a only 60 hertz screen, but it still runs very, very well. Uh, down here, we have the headphone jack. I don't know if you can see that. I do apologize. I'm using an A20 to record. So here's the headphone jack. You have the volume rockers on the left hand, right hand side. And this is the lock button. This is the camera setup you have right here. And it's just a solid, nice looking phone. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. And let's talk a little bit specs real fast. Keep in mind guys, that you can skip to the part that you wanna see anytime you want to in the description. So we're looking at, let me pull this up, a 6.1 1080p 2400 screen. So the PPI for this is actually 429, believe it or not. Pretty high, but of course the screen is 6.1, so that's to be expected. The pixels aren't being stretched. Uh, it does ship with Android 12 normally, but because this phone was released by Metro T-Mobile, it's coming up on a year being uh, one year old, but Pixel does, I think, three or five years worth of software updates. So it does ship with Android 13, so you don't have to worry about, you know, many updates when you first get outside the box. The Google Tensor processor, which is a very good processor, but it has issues when it comes to the camera, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. Uh, 128 gigs internally, 6 gigabytes of RAM. It does have a 12 megapixel primary camera and the 12 megapixel uh, ultra wide. So it is dual cameras that you can see right here, but don't let that fool you automatically. It's a pixel. It uses very, it's, listen, this is a phenomenal camera. And, I, and that's all I'm going to say about that one. We'll compare the two. It does do 4K up to 60 frames 4K for cameras for the front. And uh, I believe the front is uh, 1080p if I'm right. The back though is up to 4K 60 frames, which is really, really good. It does not have a headphone jack, as we already know. Obviously, that loudspeaker, things like that. It ships with Bluetooth 5.2, uh, 4400 battery, 4410 for those that are wondering, 18 watt fast charging. So the watt, the wattage for this is it's mediocre. To go be honest, if you're a battery hog and you use this phone and you have to throw it on a charger, I'm going to let you know right now. Oh wow, the, the, the resolution is terrible on this with this camera. <laughs> it's hard to focus on the A20. But anyway, all I'm going to say is that. The battery life on this, it could take up to over two hours to charge this thing from zero to 100, which is really mediocre in 2023. I don't know why they would release a phone with 18 watt charging speeds. That's that pitifully slow, but that's what they decided to do. So with that being said, let's hop right over to the OnePlus. So this right here, though, is the OnePlus N30 5G. Now, this has the headphone jack on the bottom, as you can see. It does have the USB-C. Charging on this bad boy is 50 watts and we're talking about 80 minutes i'm sorry 30 minutes can give you zero to 80 percent and then about 15 minutes to 20 more would give you the rest of the battery so you're looking at about under an hour for a full charge now for a lot of people that's a major turn on for me it's one of the reasons why i bought this phone now it is 6.7 in terms of uh inches it has a 108 megapixel camera though this is pretty mediocre right here i'm not even going to bother mentioning this nonsense it does have a snapdragon 695 which is a bare bones basic mid-tier processor and it does have eight gigs of ram now in terms of the resolution this is also 1080 by 2400 though the ppi is 391 primarily because this is a much bigger screen so the pixels are being stretched it does ship with android 13 
Oxygen OS 13.1. Now, what I will say is I do not know if OnePlus is going to support this for the next three years. A lot of times with their low-end devices, they tend to do like one software update in terms of OS update, but then a couple software updates throughout the year, and that's it. I could be wrong about this one. Maybe they'll take care of it this time. Who knows? Uh, like I said, Snapdragon 695 5G. It does perform very well with gaming, amongst other things. But when you're trying to do things like productivity, if we're editing videos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it does lag a lot in that category. It can't handle it, and, it, and you will suffer slowdowns if you're, you know, into that type of productivity. I gotta be honest. I can't lie to you guys about that. But if you use it as an everyday phone, you should be perfectly fine. Now, as for the screen, I don't have an issue with any of the touch. It loads very fast so far. What I will say is that there is an occasional hiccup when it comes to um, basically swiping the screen. Sometimes your touch doesn't uh, resonate with the screen because of the side or the angle that you're holding it. It does have a one-handed mode, which I haven't used. I'm never going to use that. But outside of that, it does work very, very well in that regard. Oh, that's my wife texting me right here. Get out of here. Don't a video, wife. Uh, 619 for the GPU. Like I said, when you compare it to the Google Tensor chip, it's not comparable, for being honest here. Though this does have 128 gigs internally. In addition to that, the good thing is that it does have an SD card slot, which I do have a 256 gig currently inside of it. Uh, unfortunately, the Bluetooth is only 5.1, so, you know, kind of be aware of that. Not a big deal to me. I don't have any... Dis uh, it doesn't really disconnect from anything. Uh, initially... It did disconnect from the smartwatch, my Samsung watch, multiple times, which was super annoying. I'm wearing it right now, but now I don't have that issue at all. It's probably just a, the whole startup and the phone warming up and getting used to things, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, 50 watt charging. We have a 5,000 millihertz battery. This does have NFC, obviously, just like the OnePlus does, so there you go. In terms of IP rating, this doesn't have one. The OnePlus has IP67, I believe, so... I mean, it is what it is. You're not going swimming with this guy, and it certainly should not get hit or get caught in the rain. It should be fine, theoretically, but if you don't see a rating, keep it out of the rain, keep it out of drizzle, keep it away from water, period. Just save yourself. Anyway, with that being said, let's go over to the camera rays so you can see the OnePlus camera first. No, no, no. Actually, no. It. I'll do the Pixel first, then I'll do the OnePlus, and we'll compare the actual video recorder. All right, guys, so this right here is the Pixel 6a's camera. It's going to move around so you can see how smooth the frame rate is. We are looking at 60 frames per second, 4K speed. I said 4K speeds, <laughs> 4K resolution. So as you're using it, this is how smooth it's going to look. So you can see the colors, the pictures, the trees, and get a general idea of what you're getting yourself into when you use this camera. And you do have the option between 1080p, which I'm not going to show that because it's an absolute waste of time if I'm in 4K. But I will say that the phone does run pretty hot after about 20, 30 minutes of 4K and could actually, uh, uh, the phone will stop recording to stop itself from overheating. So that's an issue that the Pixel has always had since the 6A, 6, 6A, 7. They decided to never fix that problem. But as you can see, like I said before, it runs very, very good. So there's that part of the camera test. So as for the selfie test, this is how it looks. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, I know it's a dumpster right near me, but it is what it is. And this is how it looks if you're doing like a face call or you're doing some type of recording with this device face to face. So I figured this would be the easiest way to show you guys the major differences between the two phones. Though what I will say is that, you know, OnePlus users, if you're using a high-end OnePlus, obviously you're going to have a pretty good camera, but we're talking about the N30 here. But this is the Pixel. Just so you know, it is the Pixel. Anyway, with that being said, let's check out the cameras for the other phone. So this right here is the shooter for the Pixel 6a. Now, like I always said, the Pixels are phenomenal cameras, but unfortunately, when it comes to excessive camera use, the, the phone will get warm. If you're using anything versus like a like the uh, video call, it'll still get warm. So please do be aware of that. That's a turn off for some people. Some others don't mind. So just going to go ahead and scroll over. This is how the front facing camera is going to look for the Pixel, as you can see. Um, very, very clear in my opinion. I do like it. I even moved my head and took snapshot photos while I was moving and it still came out very well with the processor. That's why I say it's not a bad, oh, that's a video. It's, that's why I say it's not a bad camera at all. Most people will be perfectly fine with this camera and like it a lot. I was cool with it too. The only issue is that the phone runs very hot when you use the camera itself. So please do be aware of that, that, uh, 
if you use this for a prolonged period of time, especially in warmer weather, the phone may have malfunctions and it's going to stop you from recording until it actually cools down. But if you're taking photos for the most part, you're perfectly fine. You more so have to worry about that with the videos. But this is the quality. So now you see it. All right, guys. So this right here is the camera to the OnePlus N35J. Now, when you have the options to switch between 1080p and 720p, that's pretty much all they give you. Obviously, you could do minor tweaks in pro mode and things like that. But this right here is the base camera. You just move it around so you can see how fluid it is. Now, again, for some people, you might be coming from a phone device that, you know, it's worse than this one. So this is a major upgrade for you, which you will like it. Uh, unfortunately, if we're comparing it to the Pixel, then it's pretty much not possible to compare them to because the Pixel, in my eyes, is the equivalent of, let's say, the iPhone SE, meaning they still use the higher end chipset inside of it, even if the specifications around the phone is a tad bit lower than the uh the, the flagship versions of it. It's still a respectable phone. If they fix that camera issue, it would have definitely been a, a major contender in my opinion. But again, this isn't a bad device. It still looks very, very good. Obviously, it does have a little problem with the movement speeds. But for someone out there that's just looking at the greenery, trees, different things, you're just recording family memories, you probably won't mind this. Again, it does not do 4K. The most it does is 1080, the highest 60 frames, and that is pretty much it. That's a real bummer. It would have been nice if it was at least 60 frames and I would have said that it would have been more of a contender in terms of camera. But anyway, let's check out the front camera next. All right guys, so right here, we have the N30 5G front camera. Now, like I said before, if you, let me pan out a little bit so you can see everything. It's not a bad camera. I think it's pretty good. I kind of probably should have did this with the Pixel 2, but I didn't, but it is what it is. I like the camera. Um, you can see that it's a little shaky. The, like I'm actually in an area that's shaded, believe it or not, but for some reason this camera just makes pictures very, very, very bright when you take them. I don't mean that might be good for some people, but it, it feels like the, the colors are kind of I'm not gonna say unnatural, but you could tell like where it shines back here on the brick that you can see right here. There we go, let me point that way. I'm never doing this. The brick, you see how the, it's it's like when I change the lighting, it's not bad. It's not horrible. I'm, I'm just finding reasons. But if you look at my skin, I'm definitely not that light. <laughs> I'm a little bit darker. But it's not a bad front-facing camera for anyone that likes these type of phones. Though, because they're at the same price point for Metro by T-Mobile, it makes it harder. This is a harder decision simply because you're going to a prepaid carrier. And if you can see the ground right there, when I'm looking at it, it's not nearly as bright as what's being shown in this video recorder. But again, it is my primary device, and I do like it. So this guy is how the OnePlus is going to actually shoot camera photos. It's un unfortunately it doesn't do anything in 4K, but it is 1080p, and still photos to me aren't bad. But you know you saw the video itself, so you judge that for yourself. And if we just take a look at some of these photos in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see it'll say shot on OnePlus. I did that on purpose so you know exactly which one is which camera is which. Even though I have the sections titled off. It just goes to show that the camera isn't professional, far from it, but it is still is good enough for most people where they'll say, you know what, I like how this looks. It looks very clear and I'm satisfied. Not everyone wants the best cameras in the world. Obviously they don't mind it, but there are other features about the OnePlus that in my opinion, make it stand out over other phones. And like I talked about before, the charger is one. So you see the detail in my face, you see the detail, uh, when we just standing outside, I try to take it in different uh, conditions. And if you're wondering why it's so bright, that is just how the camera takes photos in general and videos. Very, very bright. Um, it's pretty much nothing I can do about that personally. And I, I mean, you could obviously go into settings and change things and make the colors more warm or more vivid. But this is how it is outside the box with no edits whatsoever. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. And like I said before, the reason why I switched over to the OnePlus isn't because I thought the OnePlus was a better phone. One, I review phones. And I reviewed the A54, I reviewed the OnePlus, and now I reviewed the uh, the Pixel. I don't have the A54 on me, so normally I would do a triple threat, but I can't do that right now. So it is what it is, and I'm not willing to buy it again just for a video that's going to get like 10 views. <laughs> it's not really worth it, financially, anyway. I pay for all my phones. But anywho, uh, the Pixel had the better camera. The Pixel has the better battery, I'm sorry, not better battery life. It has the better camera, it has the better GPU, it's smoother, it's a better software experience. 
I just I love the Pixel personally, but it falls short in charging and battery speeds. For me, I have to when I'm at work, I might do some editing, a video in the back when it comes to a headset, do some shooting, recording. The Pixel can get very, very warm if you're using a 4K aspect of the camera after like 20, 30 minutes, which could be a turnoff for a lot of people. Now, if you put it on 1080p, I haven't had overheating issues, but this is something that Google refuses to fix. They refuse to acknowledge that their cameras have issues. They don't care. And it makes sense why they don't care, because most of these companies don't troubleshoot anything. They just allow the people themselves to do it. And this is the reason why some people may or may not buy the Pixel. But if we're talking about processing speeds, like uh, applications like Canva, if you're using Ucut, which if you don't know what Ucut is, I'm going to show you right now real fast before I end this video. This is Ucut. It allows you to take videos or photos of stuff that you have. You tap it, let's say you press this, and then you're able to actually convert that video to 4K, 1080p, 60 frames, things like that. You can't really see that because it's uh, the view, but I'm able to convert the video, and that's it. I don't wanna hear that. And you know what normally happens with these video converters is that you're able to post it after you're done and, and basically 4k what why are they telling me to do this I, I i'm not interested in that i'm just trying to do this here we go so i'm back here all right so whatever TikTok it, ads are, are getting on my nerves it's a good phone very very good phone uh if you're not a huge camera buff like right now it's converting the video as you can see it converts videos in the background you can't really see it because i'm not signed into uh any of my google accounts at the moment so it's converting the video as we speak now this phone on the other hand, the camera does not go up to 60 frames. It only does 30 frames on a camera, which is mediocre. It le should at least do 1080, 60 frames. The, the uh, Samsung device actually A54 does 4K. So again, this is the worst choice out of the three. I'm just gonna be honest with you right now. It's not a bad choice, but it is certainly the worst choice for software updates and just for just, I don't think they're gonna support this the way they're gonna support the other two. This is supported. The A54 is being supported. The, the, the OnePlus may or may not. But anyway, the good point is that it has a 6.7 inch screen, 120 hertz display, which is super cool. We talked about that. Um, it still has the headphone jack for those that actually use that. In addition to that, we have the 50 watt charger, which again, will charge your phone 80% in 30 minutes and, and about 45 to 50 minutes, 100%. And I like I said, I tested the phone on while using it and it still charges just as fast, even if the phone was, well, it charges faster if it's turned off, obviously. So you might 55 minutes to an hour for full charge, but me watching YouTube or me reading manga, the eminence, shadow of eminence and different things like that, I'm running, this battery life is phenomenal. That's all I can say, it's phenomenal. And you have an option to go to the settings to turn off the, you know, it's a setting where it, it actually, uh, what's the word here? Stop, slows down your charging speeds to preserve the battery life. I don't care about that. I want my phone to charge fast. I want to use this phone for a year or so or however long. And then when the next one comes out, I'm going to abandon it anyways for the next one. That's how I operate. So it is what it is. Uh, cameras aren't bad or anything like that. I don't think anything about this phone is terrible. It does have face unlock, which is very accurate as you saw. It also has the fingerprint unlock right here, which unlocks. Let me do the face again. Double tap, boom, face. Oh, you can't see my face. Let me do that one more time, but the, the camera thing is in front of me. Yep, unlock my face, just like that. So like I said before, it runs very, very well. I like them both. If you're playing video games, I did not have an issue with either phone. Believe it or not, this one actually ran Call of Duty better, the OnePlus, on HD graphics while the Pixel struggled for whatever reason. I don't know why. But when I tried uh, uh, Honkai Road, Star Road, whatever it's called, or, or Impact, whatever it's called, I tried that, I tried Diablo Immortal, I tried uh, Call of Duty. They ran very well. And believe it or not, the Pixel did not overheat when I played games, which is weird. The processor can handle games better than the actual camera. They never bothered fixing that. That's the only issue that it really has outside of a slow charging. This guy was very, very stable. It did get warm like any cell phone. It's impossible for it not to. But again, I like them both. Now, if we're talking about price tag, like I mentioned before, new line for Metro by T-Mobile, $49 new line $89 something tells me that's going to drop eventually because no one's going to pay $89 necessarily for this over a pixel or over the $49 a54 5g it's just acidine and moronic I, I just have to use those words because there's no other way to describe it it's stupid for them to, to charge that much for this one plus with those heavy hitters that they have on the side outside of iPhones um, if you're porting both are free and like I said before if you're a gamer 
and you're selling me Ian. Now, which one's better for games? I'm going to go ahead and say the Pixel overall is better. But the reason why I'm going to stick with the OnePlus and deal with l little minor hiccups and turn down the graphics on certain games, which I did have Call of Duty on high on this one. Then I switched it to medium. It was perfectly fine on HD graphics. Uh, the fast charging matters to me. Plus, OnePlus has a little section where whenever you play a game, which I'll show you right here, it's probably not going to... This camera is so terrible that I'm recording off of. A little square normally pops up in a corner. Right here, it's called Game Engine Turned On. So it does it frees up your memory. It does device optimization. It can stop text messages from coming in so you won't be disturbed. It, there's a dedicated gaming mode for this device. That's why I say I like it a lot. And it works for every single game that you play on it. And then when you're done playing for an hour, two hours, let's say your phone is starting to die or half, 50%, whatever it is, depending on the intensity of the game, pop it on a charger. 15 minutes will get you right back to... 90% whatever it is especially if you're already at that 50% mark if you're below the net guess what half an hour will get you back to 80% if your phone has completely died so just everyday use carrying it swiping left and right just going through application Facebook Instagram posting YouTube videos the network believe it or not this has a stronger network speed also in terms of uh, phone calls for some reason pixels have very weak uh networking speeds where occasionally my, my i would tell my wife oh you're breaking up you're breaking up and it was my phone that actually had the worst network believe it or not but anyway that's pretty much it it's not much more to say about this i don't need to go through a crazy analysis a comparison both these phones are have been out i'm sure you guys are already watching many youtube videos talking about it maybe one of mine because i did do a review on this phone uh and i'll let you decide now like i said before if your camera it's the most important thing to you you're going to get the pixel but it does overheat if it's in 4K. There's nothing you can do about that. If you're outside and, and, and it's 90 degrees, your phone might get warm. It's going to let you know that it needs to cool down. That's how pixels roll. That's the processor. It's, it, to me, it's just not optimized properly. But some people don't really care. Some people just live normal lives, going to and from work, take a picture of the kids, a graduation here and there, blah, 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 blah. You'll be perfectly fine. But for the photographer in you, yes, this will still be better. Regardless, you just have to deal with the cool down times with the camera. This one is just for the everyday man. That's why I said this phone should have either been $19 at the new line with a new number or, or $49. The porting should be free. To pay it straight out is $279 or, or $249, something like that. So it's a $300 phone. So it is affordable no matter what you do. But anyway, I will leave that guys up to you. Now, I will say one more thing. If you go to the OnePlus website and buy this phone, they will actually throw in the Nord 2 Buds, which I do have. I bought them separately on Amazon. But they will throw that in with this phone limited time. So, oops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. But they both have tempered glass on them, so it's all good. Like and subscribe, like always, guys. And I will see y'all in the next video.